God hears and sees repentance. Our scripture reading today comes to us from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 18. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne as I made covenant with your father David, saying, You shall never lack a successor to rule over Israel. The reading is the encounter Solomon has, a second one, following the dedication of the temple. Now, it also is after the palace is completed, and at the high point that the chronicler seems to emphasize as how great it certainly was in Solomon's kingdom as described by the chronicler. This is God's response to Solomon's prayer at the temple dedication that just occurred in the previous chapter with all these different things that Solomon petitioned as he dedicated the temple. And God is certainly saying he will reside in the temple. And it seems that the chronicler, first and second chronicles is actually one book split for convenience sake, recording the life of the royal family and the subsequent split of the kingdom following Solomon's death and a series of faithful and unfaithful rulers over the house of the southern kingdom, which comes to be known as Judea whereas the northern kingdom splits away. Now, what does this all have to do with us? Well, I have often seen the verse 14, if we will humble ourselves and earnestly repent, then God will hear our prayers as a statement that uh, somehow when the world is shut up and when we're having natural disasters, God is withholding these things so that we will come to his attention and repent. Now, certainly that was a theological concept of the time and place that often natural weather events were seen as signs of the gods or God favor or disfavor with the people. And it sets this up where God says he will hear and relent for what follows. The chronicler is very specific in highlighting this now relationship between the house of David and God's blessing or retribution against it. A series of good kings and the land is blessed. Evil kings who do not uphold the covenants, and we need to be reminded that Solomon is going to be one of those that actually disobeys will send natural as well as national catastrophe upon the people. Because again and again, the people will rebel and the royal house will mislead and have evil things happen. This is not to, not to say that humility in prayer and genuine repentance is not heard. And I think that's the larger point here. But certainly the danger in handling humility and repentance is that in some way this makes God respond. And that's certainly the implication. But again, this is a prayer of Solomon 
with God responding to it, and it's certainly for Solomon. And it does seem that a pattern of repentance leads to improved life. What we shouldn't consider is that if we'd all just simply pray and, and be repentant, then suddenly a natural disaster will be averted or, or changed, because certainly they thought that rain stopped because the gods were angry, where we know from science that more often than not, it's really large patterns and systems in the world that manage the drought. One can argue and oftentimes has heard that sin has withheld and therefore this huge drought that's in an area is the fault of sinful behavior and unrepentance. Well, I think that's a bit too simplistic to look at the world that way, that sometimes it's just a La Nina year. Not that the stench of Las Vegas has rendered God stopping the rains and the what's now known as the 20 year mega drought. I have serious concern that we would apply the sinfulness or virtues of the people residing in the land as a direct impact on weather patterns. But God hears our prayers and a genuine repentance will be rewarded and heard and seen by God. That is the assurance we're given. Whether that impacts the weather, I'll leave to you. But a changed heart is a heart received by God. Let us pray. God, you alone know every detail of my life. You know my past problems, my present pain, and my future purpose. And there is no situation that is too hard for you to redeem because nothing is impossible for you. Thank you. Forgive me for all the times I have failed to follow you. Please realign my heart with your will and teach me what it means to be your disciple. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.